Hello everyone, you're welcome to another episode. We are ready to launch. This is the 66th pod and I have with me a very special guest. We'll be discussing a very interesting topic. But before we dive right into it, I want each person to just tell us a bit um, about themselves. El, you're, you're familiar with the system, so you could go yeah. first. Um, my, name is, my name is El Mustafa. I'm Elder Tribesman at the 66th Tribe, um, a creative director and once in a while I rap. So, yeah. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Emmanuel. Um, I'm an invited guest on this show. Um, also a creative. I do websites, you know, graphic design, all those funny things. And then I'm a church boy. <laughs> Hi guys, uh, my name is Akubire Manolo Reva. I'm a content producer and a digital strategist. I'm a tribesman, mm-hmm. just like Musti. <laughs> yeah. And I'm rocking with the 66, so let's go. Yeah. All right, we are ready to launch. So um, today we'll be talking about the life of a preacher's kid, the life of a PK. So preacher's kid is like a commonly used term. Everybody knows there's the movies, there's the song, there's everything. But um, I feel like today we want to get like your opinion. You know how they say POV. So this is like POV, you're a preacher's kid. What is it about? So before we get into it, um, I, I just want to, I just want to, how that person up. Anyways, I want to get, we're surrounding, we're anchoring this topic around the sons of Eli. So in the Bible, in first time, it talks about the sons of Eli with this, this, and this. And then they did, they, they were not, um, I'm paraphrasing here, but the Bible said they were not conscious of their duties and of their priesthood. All right, so we're anchoring this conversation around that. But at the same time, like, we want to know, we want to get like the insider scoop. What's it like for you guys? So, um, I think I'm sorry, disclaimer. I'm not a pastor's kid, though. I'm not because now I'm it sounds the like well, I'm the pastor's kid friend. I'm not a pastor's kid, I'm the friend of the pastor's <laughs> kid that's not behaving well. So, <laughs> so but, please, I'm not okay. So, I'm yeah. not a pastor's child either. Yeah, so, okay, so, this is very interesting for me, and yeah. I'm going to allow you guys. You both like both you guys are experts, experts preachers kids. Yeah. So I wanted like I want to know. So I'm going to be as quiet as possible. I just want you guys to express and tell us like what it is like inside. So I think I want to start with our invited special guest, Emmanuel. <laughs> oh, I've started with him. I think he has a lot to say. No, I, you have <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is what pastors kids. <laughs> humility. I think you have a lot to say. That I, it's fine. He, we'll get to him. So Emmanuel, tell so us. So I'm I'm talking about like the good, bad, and ugly, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, first, me personally, I think I like being a pastor's child. Mm. I do, to, oh, be, wow. to be honest. I like it. Um, now, I mean, I'm talking about now. Then I didn't used to like it. I mean, but now I think I understand it better. Mm. Um, I understand why there were so much expectations back then and like the heap of it and stuff like that. I think that they could have done it better, like past the expectations better. Like they were, they were supposed to be like balance, but now that I've grown up by myself, I've brought the balance by myself. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, now I do things the way I want because I understand it, not because the way I was told mm-hmm. to do it. And I think that's what was happening when I was younger. Oh, you're a pastor's child. You have to be this way. You have to be that way. But now that I'm saying, no, exactly. I don't have to be that way. I understand what you're saying, and I can do what you're saying, but I will do it my own way. Mm. Mm. So uh, I think that's why I, I'm enjoying it now, or I like it now. Mm. Yeah. So what's the bad? What's the ugly? One of the the bad, yeah. Let me say this very funny one. When I was growing up as a pastor's child, I didn't like visitors coming around because <laughs> they would take my meat. You know, <laughs> we could have done we, we your done, personal meat. I mean, every, they were done cooking. They've shared food for everyone, and then you, you are coming to visit us. For what reason? And then I'm the last born, so oh. of course I'm the go to person. Yeah. Break your meat. So what I started doing over time was that when they give me food first, I ate my meat first. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so I started doing that. When I get to church on Sunday, I'm like, why did you come to our house? That <laughs> you know that kind of thing. I mean, that's very funny. But one of the bad for me, and I was talking about balance the other time, is that um, my parents traveled a lot because they were pastors. So I was technically raised by my siblings that's me mm, yeah, right I had, i'm the last born and i have way older siblings 
I was born in the thick of my parents' ministry. You know, yeah. not at the, not at their beginning stage. So they were already like established pastors, and they were moving them around <laughs> states in in the country. The only time I had to move with them to Anambra State, I lived in Anambra State for four years. So I finished my primary school there. I started my secondary school there, and that kind of thing. Before I moved back to Lagos and things like that. So the the, that kind of disconnect was there with my parents. I didn't used to like my dad then because, I mean, you personally not even used to see. You mm. not even get to know what you want to even like about him. You just know that, okay, he's a, he's a good guy. I mean, for him to be a pastor, <laughs> he's a good guy, to be honest, because yeah. people saw him as a leader. People mm. will go to him and he will give them advice. He will solve their, solve their problems. Think, ah, you must be a good person. So I knew, I knew that, but... It took a while for me to know that good person for myself. Mm. So back then, I mean, it was just a, so that's just one of the, the sides of it. Yeah. Mm. Thank you very much. So, Arva. Finally, it has gotten to me. Yes, it has yeah. gotten to you. Tell us. I'll start from the good side. Mm -hmm. So, being a pastor's kid makes you love God more. Trust me. Mm. Yes, because you experience Him. In, the truest form. The now, truest form? Yes, because you are receiving directly from <laughs> somebody that is talking to him. Mm, mm. Mm. So you are, you understand you understand God better. And because you are a pastor's kid, you understand that your pastor is also human. Mm. He's your dad. So you see him make mistakes. Mm. But you understand that those mistakes don't reduce him, does not reduce his anointing, and does not make him less of a Christian or less of someone that loves God or has God in him. So that's like the major advantage of being a pastor's kid. The major disadvantage is time. Like he said, we are first to get to church, we are last <laughs> to leave. It was frustrating, trust me very very frustrating we are at church by 6 30 a.m in the morning we'll finish first service we'll finish second service we'll finish workers meeting we'll still go for home fellowship it was exhausting sometimes i felt like like I can i'm tired you still get to move before you sleep we we'll still do evening devotion <laughs> by 3 a.m all of a sudden your church member sometimes your parents do not pray alone. They also come and call you to come and pray for somebody that is in their own yeah. house. So it was very, very tired at a time. Another thing is that your entire life is planned around the church, planned around church programs. So you may miss Champions League oh. because you went to the do this guy. These are the real, may, these are real issues. It was annoying. When you were young, there are many things were you thinking about. Those were the things uh. that were. It was yeah, important to me. Champions League yes. was important to me. But I was missing it because of digging deep. Why? <laughs> like, why can't I miss digging deep once in a while? But mm. no, you must go for digging deep. You must go for all of the services. So that, that was like a major disadvantage. Mm. Okay, that's interesting. Um, El, even though you're not a preacher's kid, do you, do you, have, you, do you have any opinion I, I about what they said quiz. so far? About what they said so far? Yeah, he, he, I mean, it, it, there's no way you'd say that it was... I think the way everyone's painting it now, it's like you had the responsibility on yourself. <laughs> going, going like You were just a tag along. It wasn't no, like you could it. have made friends in church. You would have made a lot of friends yeah, we, in church. You'd you know, have had your own community in church. Friends, we have the same problems. Oh, so the friends you yes, make... <laughs> we're pastor's kids. We have the same problems. You know? I think it's really interesting, something you said about how um, you were experiencing God in the broadest form. Because... I've also heard these complaints where they are like, um, the fact that he's all pastor and piety, um, and piety and all that in church, and then you come home and you, you know, like you do something and you see your dad angry, or you see him um, displaying something that is not necessarily the fruit of his spirit. So reconciling that person with the pious man you see in church on Sunday. Um, how did like that? How did that shape your view of God the Father? Because uh, this is something I've heard a lot among preachers' kids. 
So in just one minute, please just like answer and, that. And please, this should be when you were younger. I feel like now that you're older, exactly. you're able to understand. Exactly. Yes. Like when you were younger, before mm -hmm. maybe preteen, like mm -hmm. how did you feel? Like oh, this guy where they preach calmly, like this nine exactly. shouting, like they club me. Like I remember, I knew you'd have made you a stubborn. I, I, I was so, obviously stubborn. Yeah, so we did ah. collect once in a while, you did take no backhand. So, no one's yeah, it was <laughs> everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, that was more of my mom. Mm. More than my dad. My dad is more relaxed and chill. But my mother, Jesus Christ, <laughs> I questioned it a lot of times. But later on, I understood that even God is like that. Mm. Mm. Do you understand? There are times that hmm, he has to use iron hand for you so that your mind like you can be shaped properly. And I think that iron hand shaped me. Mm. Do you understand? So sometimes I under, I like now I understand, but then ah no, I do understand. I was constantly no, there fighting. Was, there, was, there was no way to understand it. I mean, you were young. So even if my parents were not pastors, if you were beating my teachers in school that were beating me, I didn't understand too. Mm. <laughs> right? And they're not they're not pastors, Abby. Mm. But my dad, right? So the thing there is that when my dad is beating me, honestly, now I realize it was for a good cause. But then I'm like, what we are beating me for was not even uh, what did I do? Isn't that deep? Do you understand yeah. what did I do? And then they will sometimes you know, they're not all beaten so that we don't they are not monsters, you know, it was sometimes it was punishment that will mm. do this and big pain. That's yeah, not, it's, it's not any better now. It's, mm. it's painful, right? <laughs> but me, the difference is that my dad was also a pastor in our house. Mm. So I didn't just see him as a pastor only on Sundays or only when we're in church. I mean, my dad would wake us up in the morning for devotion and he would be the one to read the word of God, explain it to us, mm. and, and, and that kind of thing. So, thinking about him talking about experiencing God in his spirit from then, when we were younger, right? We were <laughs> not really born again. We were Christians by religion. Yeah. Yeah. Do you understand? So, I feel like what that did for us is that we knew Bible and all those things. But when we had that real yeah, encounter, yeah. when you now, you, yeah. you could remember the day I'm like, fam, I'm born again. That, mm -hmm. that period. All those things that you learned Mm. made it easier for easier. you to, to oh, now so fellowship true. with God. Mm. So because profound. every day you were reading the Bible, mm. you knew Bible verses, you really didn't have God. Do you understand? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Do you understand? So now that you now have God, you're like, when you now read those Bible verses that you were learning, mm. it has a different meaning oh, to you. Oh, you guys enjoy that big. Yes. Okay, yeah. That yeah. was why you guys I'm enjoy saying, that big. It's up. That's what I said that now. Sense. I'm enjoying it, to be honest. Like many things, my mom then used to do this thing in our in our community. Then mm -hmm. all the children in our community will come like not every evening, like maybe Sunday evenings or every other Sunday evening, and then she would bring out these tales, this calendar thing that she used to do, and then they would put animals and she would like try to use animals to describe like the fruit of the flesh, mm -hmm. and then it was always fun and we're plenty, but we're just learning then. Do you understand? Now that I became much. born again, I'm like, oh my god! Like when you are now reading those things. Those lessons is like they mm. come back to you mm. and they, they help your learning process now that you are born again. So that kind of that part I can't lie. I'm happy. I'm I told you I'm happy I'm a pastor. So I'm yeah. very happy. I think that it gave it gave me kind of head start, mm. to be honest. That's interesting. So yeah. um I have a few more questions, yeah. But before we do, I just want in one minute, each person. So I'm gonna start with you, Hell. What do you think Samuel did wrong? What made the sons of Eli turn out the way they did? Um, I think oh, this is tough to answer. This is it tough is to tough say. To, it's not yeah. tough to answer. It's tough to say and not sound some discuss. type of way. Yeah. Um, I think I think I've had maybe not pastors, not not too many pastors' kids as friends, but I've had people who their parents were in position of power and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think even as as a pastor, you're in a position of power, you're in a position where you're in charge of people, and sometimes it's easy to neglect what's back home. Because you're so engrossed with what's going on in church. Front. Oh, we have this event, we have that, we need to raise this amount, we need to do that, and then you forget what's going on. And I think it's why in pop culture people tend to say, oh, pastors, kids are whatever, whatever. Most of it isn't true anyway. But yeah, it's easy for you to get, you know, in that space where you don't really look back at home and like, you know, what's going on at home. You don't have time for your children Children's basically home. to raise them, and then they are raised by different people. And if you're lucky, they're raised by the right people. If you're not, it could be raised by the streets. Mm. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, Simon. 
I don't know. I, I think that this might be weird to say, but you know this thing that people say that when they call your parents, they do not call me. Mm. Like, you know, pastor's children say that thing. We're gonna get to that. Bro, give me chop knuckle first. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> give me, give me think, chop no. knuckle. It's not chop knuckle in a good way. Drop no, your hand. I think, that, you know, I think that once they've called somebody in your family, especially if it's the father, or they called your great grandfather, they've called all of you. Ah. Yeah. Ah. That's that's what you believe. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're gonna ah. get into that. We're gonna get into so, that. But in just one minute, could you just tell us what you think um someone did wrong? Yeah, but we're going to we're definitely gonna get into that. It helps my answer to, to that. Yeah, yeah, sure. So yeah, and that is what the children of Eli themselves did not realize. Mm. I know that we can say Eli to failed as a father and stuff Somehow, yeah. and things like that. Yeah. But the children of Eli, your Sorry. dad is is the head priest, right? Let's say you are not even called to be the priest yourself, right? You have a responsibility to help your father succeed. If you consider By the fact that still age. Eli also raised Samuel, it really puts that in perspective. That's what I'm saying. Mm. That means if Eli had the capability to raise Samuel and she turned out fine, mm-hmm. that, some portion has to lay, we have to lay some blame at the, at the children. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Do you I see, I see, I agree. Yeah. Do, you, do you get what I'm saying? That means that Eli could have could be telling them the same thing was telling Samuel. But do you but think, do you think it was because Samuel was Eli? brought into the house of Eli as Samuel this was guy is meant to be what Exactly, so he, he knew that uh, you were born he to be this thing. Yeah. I but, think Eli's children did not <laughs> realize it. Maybe their father did not teach them. Maybe Sa- that's Samuel's true. mom would have uh, told you are going Maybe here. But she brought him in as a child. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Even as a child, they've told you that you are going here to learn. I mean, you probably still be in contact with your mom and they're telling you, this mm. is why you're here. Simply this they is they why you're you. here. If they carry me and just as I am, like when I was small, and they put me in a pastor's house and in the church, I know that I'm for the service of God. As in, I don't it's think just, I mean, that kind of thing. Apple, you are, we are already living in a pastor's house at like at yeah. a small but age. there are people who their parents their dads their businessmen and they want to make music like exactly you have to pound it in their head if you it's want them to join that music is not a ministry now music is a ministry it exactly is. so so, so when you you, yes so you no no i mean i mean i'm saying bu- like people don't follow exactly what, what their, their parents, parents do. do you don't that's the mistake we make and say that we're not called exactly you were called, I, I think I it's not that. just that you were called to do the exact pastor. thing that your parents mm-hmm. were called mm-hmm. to do. Mm-hmm. So that's, it, that's being it. a pastor is a ministry, mm-hmm. right? So if you your pastor, if your parents were called into ministry, you were also called. Just that your own might not be a pastor. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So what, I don't I don't get it. I will what, so whatever you do is ministry basically. It's mm-hmm. basic, basically, as far as what God has told you to do. What, what you are, you are, you are tribe, so non, you are, non what pastors you are, children. What we are doing is you are running a ministry. Yes. Do you know? Yes. Mm. You don't know because you've not. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because you've not. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on sorry. Okay, okay, so I, 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 I think what you're trying to say. I just want to clarify. I just want to clarify something. So he does the tribe, and mm. then he has his normal work. Yeah. So are you saying he has a normal work and ministry? He has a yes. ministry and a mission. So it's like your purpose in life. Yeah. Mm. He's so divi- everybody is in ministry, basically. If they're once Christian, they're Christian, you're called. Yes. I mean, they called all, God called yeah, you as a Christian. Christian that's, yeah. that is, once you're born again, you're called to do... You're created... In fact, not even born again. You're created for a purpose. Yes. So once you are in working in purpose, your purpose divides into two things, your ministry and your mission. So your ministry is what you do for God in the church. Your mission is what you do for God in the world at large. Hmm. So, hmm. like, your work... Your, for example, now... If I've been sent to build, let's just say I'm giving a, 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 a tag phrase, like that's my purpose to build. In the church, I could be building people, helping, like, I mean, the teens ministry. I'm building children, teenagers, and all those things to become what they need to be. That's a ministry. In the mission, I could be building organizations. Mm. Do you understand? I could be helping businesses raise, do strategy for them, and all those things, and growing businesses. I'm doing both. Yeah. Ministry and mm-hmm. mission. Mm-hmm. So don't we we cloud everything together and say ministry? I don't want to. I only want to face the world. Mission. But it's both. It's both. Some people are now called into full time ministry. ministry. There's that yeah, one. That's separate. Mm-hmm. That means their mission, their ministry, everything is mm-hmm. their mm-hmm. church. Some of us are not. Some of us are called to do one party and one party, but both of them fit together to form our purpose. So that's the distinction that 
pastor's children need to make. Mm. For example, mm. in the church now, my parents used to hammer on this thing that, oh, ministry, this thing. But when they saw that, I'm in the media ministry in church as well, right? So I, I do social, digital media mm. for church and stuff. And at a point, I was, I was growing to a stage where they drafted me into Pastor Deboe's media, media thing. And then that was when my parents now realized that you might be doing something here. Yeah, do you understand? Mm. So to them, they felt comfortable with that. Oh, this is now a ministry. Mm. This is now I'm ministering to people by what I do, not necessarily by me standing on the pulpit to preach. Mm. It's just one thing. My my head of unit used to say something that when we do a flyer for like oligo services and things like that, and somebody sees it on social media and comes, and then that digital does like a altar call, mm-hmm. and the person comes to give his life to Christ. Mm-hmm. We are shareholders in that person that came to give his life exactly. to Christ. Yeah. Because yeah. without my flyer, that person would not have come. Yeah. That's Do you understand? I, I ministered through, that, through my flyer to that person. That Joe ministered in word to bring the person out for salvation. Mm. That's so, so interesting. That's such an yeah. interesting way to I think it's, but I think... Uh, we, but, so you are, if that Joe is receiving blessings for that person, I am receiving. Yeah. I do agree with that, but I'm just not comfortable with calling everything a ministry and maybe no, it's personal. No, we have to get comfortable with I think with you it. can play a part in somebody's that administration. That part you are playing is, is a is ministry, ministry Yes. So you there are that ministries that in the ministry. Aaron, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Minister of State. Aaron and all, Aaron and all. Mm. Abi, was it what the person I said that was pouring and on water on somebody's and washing it in the Bible? I can't remember. That was that person's, okay. that was that person's work. That, he was ministering to the man of God. Mm. That's what they called it. People in the olden days, when they say you're a servant to, to like, like Joshua to Moses now, mm. yeah. what he was doing was, was changing his... They didn't have toilets, right? So yeah. they Chamber would like pot. they would defecate inside, like inside all these like bowls Chamber and pockets yeah. and yeah. all. He was one changing all those things, and the Bible called it ministering unto Moses. Mm. Yeah. That's so interesting. Do you know that's what the Bible called it? So when they said ministry, he was not preaching to Moses. So mm. he was helping Moses. Some of us, our work is help, ministry of help. That's what we've come to do. Some people will be the leaders. They will be there in the limelight. The mm. ones on the altar. Some of us are to amplify their voices. Mm. This is so interesting, and mm. I, it's so funny how we got here from talking about. Um, yeah, that's why I said that me, I being really got comfortable kid. being a preacher's child. Yes. I'm like, no, I'm happy with it's, it it's, because it I know what I'm doing, mm. and it's a ministry to me. Erva, do you have anything you want to add? <laughs> this Baba already said everything that I, I could have possibly said. Forever, how did you minister? How do I minister? How did you minister? Don't do now. I know you, you probably don't minister in any way. How did you? <laughs> oh my God. Okay, oh, okay. Remember, how do you minister? Let him answer okay. by himself. So how do I minister now? Mm. This is this is right. Yeah, uh, he got me there. How 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 did I minister before? Mm. So I, I I used to be team's president in okay. with him and then. And I started this program in like 2017, 2018. It was called The Expression. Expression. Yeah, we had like over a thousand teenagers attend the event. I, I like I was in Redeem Camp then, and then we're at there was one program then, National Young Leader, Leaders Retreat, NYLR. Mm. And then we're just there, and people were praying, and then I heard a voice in my head <laughs> it was very funny that day because before then i'm a preacher's kid but i had never really 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 explored. explored or experienced the holy spirit but that it was funny because i was hearing something in my head i would say it out my guy was hearing a bible verse and he would open the bible verse and it was what i was saying from my mouth and he was just hearing the bible verse separately mm. bro i was astonished that day and what I heard then was that my own journey was different from my dad's journey. Mm. My dad's journey was to stand on the pulpit, preach to young people. Mine was to go into the darkness with the light. That's mine. Mine is to go to the unconventional spaces where other Christians might, may not go into. Mm. And I spread light there. Mm. So that's what bettered the expression. Mm. We had a fashion show, all of those things. And we're reaching out to, we had over a thousand teenagers in attendance and like we're using music to mm. to that's reach out to these people unfortunately we didn't continue it after like two years three years uh, that's where i met yeah. mustafa too yeah. yeah so mustafa was was one that covered the program that year but that's what i've continued with this 66 because i know that 
there's a gap that needs to be filled mm. with proper content yes. content that does not segregate mm. content that does not segregate content that everybody can listen to and learn from and receive the light from so that is my own purpose that's your ministry yeah. and it's funny because my next okay. question for him was going to be why as a preacher's kid why don't you want to be a pastor why are you not taking up positions of service in church but i feel like you've answered half of it mm. but you could just like complete go ahead complete that thought i saw how my i saw how my parents lived and me i don't want to live like that <laughs> that's the truth <laughs> i'm completely different from them mm. do you understand their understanding is completely different from my own understanding. Okay. I understand that I can reach more people than they reach. Mm. Do you understand? Using my own skills. Mm. So, if I create content or I produce content, I can reach one million people, two million people. Mm. They, yes, they had church, churches. It's limited compared to the kind of content. Was it really about the results you could it, get, or just, <laughs> or just because your personality didn't fit into what they were? No, it's not, no, I'm not even talking about results. I'm saying mm. completely different. That's why mm. my personality is completely different from mm. theirs. It's not about, it's not, it's not about the results for me. It's about just speaking about the lights that I have received. Mm. That's what is important to me. I just want to in the way be able you able to express it, though, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Do you understand? That's yeah. all that is important to me. To be fair, like I think I have, I, I can understand what he's saying because I was, I was um, provincial president in Teens Church. I was regional vice president. Why in didn't you say this? It doesn't make me a pastor's kid, please, gentlemen. Gentlemen, I was a Muslim until I was like twelve, so it don't, I don't qualify for. That is so interesting. Being a pastor's kid in any shape or form, but what I would say is that experience as well. It was very enjoyable for me. I enjoyed that period of my life because it was like basically preteen to older teenager kind of thing but i got to a point where i felt like my service i couldn't express it felt like i was you know when you have a big generator not not necessarily when you have like a big generator and then you're using it to power to just charge your phone Mm. that was what it felt like i felt like this is only going to go one way this is what we're doing it felt like a routine kind of yeah and i couldn't express myself wholly through that kind of medium and I don't want to say I got bored of it, but I just had to. I just evolved in two ways where I could do other things, which was oh, church so like, the you felt like there was more you could do. There was more that I could yeah. do. There were ways that maybe not even in t- more in terms of the results I could get, but I could express so myself better. better. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So mm. you know, with that, it's like oh, you have to keep. We're sending text messages. You have to have a list of phone numbers. You have to. I'm not a paperwork kind of person. I'm a creative. And there was, we didn't have too much room there. And then even when I wanted to rap, it's like, ah, there's not enough time. As the president, ah, let me just step down. You, <laughs> you guys go ahead. You know, and I had to find a space where I could express myself better. And whilst doing that, it, it helped me be more impactful. I think what I'm doing now, I can do for a longer time. I can do it. There's so many ways I can, you know, improvise. I can mm, do so much with it. it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think I, I get it. When, what you said. Yeah. So, Emmanuel, why aren't you a pastor? Well, I'm, 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 you're Man is a pastor. You're cold now. I'm not called to be a pastor, exactly. But the thing is that one, like you said, I, I don't. I, my first experience of knowing what a pastor feels like, I don't want it, right? Mm-hmm. Because I mean. <laughs> I feel yeah. like there's so much tea you guys are hiding. Yeah, from. yeah, because no, at some point you're saying you don't want it. At one point you're saying you don't want it. I told you that before I didn't it's like sweet, it. Now I like it. It's sweet, it's sweet. Now, it's now I like it, I'm saying. Mm. I like being a pastor's child, right? I didn't say I didn't like being a pastor. I don't even think I should be a pastor. It's not my thing. Mm. Do you understand? It's, it's not my own form of expression. Mm. Okay. My own form of expression is that let's sit down together, let's discuss. Mm. how our lives will be better mm. oh you what are you doing you what are you doing what I mean, well, we've done that one i feel like okay. but to god this mic as i'm looking at it now so is exactly so i've preached twice in my life right preached twice one when i was a child during um this oh, stress which week. week yeah <laughs> now you it's interesting to know that the second time i preached I was at was last year mm. from that time and funny enough it was during children's weekend as well in church 
I'm a children teacher in church, so my pastor just came to the group one day during that week, and I was like, so who's going to preach on Sunday? And we're like, oh, we're going to fix up one of the children, just tell them what, what he's going to say. Mm-hmm. Pastor was like, no, that one of the teachers should, should teach. And mm-hmm. it was like, the HOD, my HOD in children's church, should bring out the list of everybody that was a children teacher. And then bro, she brought everything. Do you know the funny thing? I was not opening the message. You know that sometimes they're reading message through notifications. So I was just going through it and reading it. Then he now tagged me and said, you'll be the one to preach. I, like, I opened it and I was like, <laughs> Pastor, what are you talking about? But two times, yeah? The spirit. Mm. No, no, it's not even about the spirit. When I was done, Mm. I realized that okay, this is not what you're supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be <laughs> You know that kind of thing. No, I was no the spirit of God moved and all those things. I you know the yeah. word and everything. Yeah. But when I came down, it, I just knew that. This is oh boy, no, no. Okay. Your own is not to hold the mic mm. and do poop it. It just it just occurred to me, and that was last year, right? Mm. So that's why. Mm, this, I, is, I, this is I a very know. this is a very interesting um, important conversation, but. Um, for us to wrap up here, I just want both of you, or actually three of you who are pastor's kids, I want us to talk um, touch on something very important. Disclaimer, I'm not in a very, <laughs> sorry, in a very short time. Um, starting from um, Areva, so people who are pastor's kids, at least that I know of, there's been this issue of being Christians by like association. Mm. How do they get to the point where they actually know God for themselves, hear God by themselves? Because, like you said. They are literally attached to this source, so to speak. Like they are seeing their parents hearing from God, but there's, there's a disconnect. There's something they are doing wrong. There's something that is not being communicated to them that is hindering their own ability to communicate with God. So, what do you, in just one minute, what do you think they are not doing right? What do you think you can work on? Okay, what I think is that all those messages we heard over time is just like they are pouring seeds. Mm. There are point seeds. There are point seeds. And one day it will surely germinate. Mm. Me, the first time I really, really, really experienced God, I was already, I think I was like 19, like I think I was already 19 or 20 at NYLR. Like I still keep going back to this yeah. retreat. If I wasn't a pastor's kid, I probably wouldn't have made it to that retreat. Do you mm. understand? <laughs> I made it to that retreat and I experienced God there and then. Sure. So, I don't think there's anything like, I, I won't call it association. Mm-hmm. I won't call it association. I, I, I feel like the word was just being planted. Planted. It was fertile ground. Mm-hmm. Eventually, it was going to germinate. Mm-hmm. And it germinated. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Glory. Glory. <laughs> okay, Manu. Okay, so what I would say is that I don't really, I don't know what they can do that will mm-hmm. make them, but I feel like when, if it is in the plan of God, right, as, as, I, as I think it will be, right, I mean, God wants everybody to make it to heaven. There is a time that it will just happen to them, mm. where that encounter will happen. We have made, I have many friends that we grew up together that are not, um, is he agonistic? I forgot what to call it now. They have I different names these yes, days. Yes, most of those buzzwords. They have so many <laughs> of them, and it's cool right now. Mm. Do you understand? And I, I just think that at some point, if when it is time for them, yeah. or at the point where God has a purpose for everybody, so when is He wants to use you for something, and He's like, and or He wants to do something, and He's like, oh, who is the person that will do it? If it happens that He's one of them, and they are not in the faith. Mm-hmm. That time, they, something will happen that will they, it will, they will find yeah. their way. Mm-hmm. You know that as, because you're a pastor's child doesn't necessarily mean that uh, you're not even born a Christian. Nobody was. Mm-hmm. At the pastor, you're gone. The, even the pastor himself, he was not born a Christian. So me too, I was not born a Christian. But there was just that one, that moment where it, something happened to each one of us. It's different for all of us. Mm-hmm. Nobody can. I can't claim your salvation story. Yeah. You can't claim my salvation story. So each one of them would get to that point when it is the right time. So when I, all those my friends now, they are still my friends now. I mean, we mm. talk, we just we, we do things together, we <coughs> run businesses together, and all those things. But is their belief right now? Mm. And I know if if it is really doing me, ah, that why is this? I will go and pray for the person. You know that kind of thing. So mm. I say, ah, oh God, this, ah, but we used to we used to know Bible then. You know, and this person now 
they that's the funny thing they know the bible exactly. right mm-hmm. so what do you want to tell them mm. is it you that will t- i think it's just the work of the holy spirit at mm. the right time to just save their souls again and that okay. kind of thing. Also, I yeah i i think so i think i agree so much with emmanuel because even when when i moving from being a muslim to a christian like i finished reading the whole bible before i decided that okay i'm going to go to church and i think i was in church for like two to three years and i i wasn't really saved i didn't really get the message of salvation or amen you know how church is which is crazy crazy stuff because you can listen to the sermon in the church for one year and st- if you don't know that oh jesus died resurrected you accept him you're saved you could miss out on that message for the whole year because they're yeah. always preaching about oh the five spirit of the spirit is blah 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 and the, it, it feels like it's basic so well we can just everybody should know this one now let's yeah, go on so i was in church like that here for like two to three years and i didn't really get the message when i got it, it was at home I was listening to Joseph Prince and it was, it felt like this, I've never heard anything like this in my life. (laughs) So this is it. Somebody has died. Somebody has paid. It felt like I was just going to church because I'm a Christian. It's routine. I genuinely enjoy, I enjoyed it a lot more and I still enjoy reading the Bible. But it was, I loved it. And, but I didn't really get the core of the message. And I think even with pastor's kids, like, you know, you're going to get saved. And I even think a lot of it is also when you're, too young sometimes you're just too young yeah. to understand Get the message yeah. to understand what they're talking about you know all these stories you know david you know something you know god is good you know devil is bad yeah but you just don't get the message i think you get to a point in your life where you're old enough and when things are just meant to align and you just get it one way or the other and you understand the message and i think it's not different for for anybody really yeah. mm, interesting thank you very much um so this has been a very stimulating conversation very interesting conversation and I think one thing that stood out for me is how each person in some way has kind of said that PKs should keep showing up. Even, in, like, even at points where they don't fully understand the message, they, don't, they haven't completely found their mission or their uh, ministry, oh, yeah, they should keep showing up. They should, yeah. like, yeah. I know it gets tiring and all that, but at the end of it, you're going to look back someday and be like, oh, yes, my parents were absolutely right about this i hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we did thank you so much for showing up thank you for being here with us one love <laughs> <laughs> all right bye let me cut out the bye